My name is Pastor Marlon Curtin. This is the Rockway Cathedral. Uh, welcome, welcome to our Sunday service. Welcome to our Sunday service. If you like what you see here, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Our foundational scripture is Matthew 7, verses 24 and 25. Matthew 7, verses 24 and 25. We at the Rockway Cathedral say we're building God's kingdom in you. Be blessed. It's January 15th, 2023. Welcome to online worship at the Rockaway Cathedral. We are so glad that you have chosen to be with us this morning. Whether you're just having a look or seeking a place to worship, we are delighted to have you here. And though we may not be able to meet together physically, that is not going to stop us from rallying together spiritually. Join us online for a time of worship and a message from Pastor Marlon Curtin. Join us in experiencing the joy of singing to the Lord with the gospel duo, Melody and Harmony.
Join us for Bible study on Tuesdays on Zoom, meeting ID 960-2462-6792 and password 271927. Join us on Thursdays from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. for our weekly prayer meeting. Call in to 712-770-8017 with passcode 352-617. Come pray with us. thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Lord, Lord, I speak, speak peace into the hearts and minds of the body of Christ. I come against the spirit of anxiety in the name of the Lord Jesus. No more living in anxiety. No more, no more living in fear. No more worry about the future. No more concern about the past. No more worry about the present. I speak the Sabbath rest into the people of God. I speak Sabbath rest into the people of God. Place of rest, a place of repose. We come against anxiety. We come against the spirit of anxiety in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I cast it out in the name of the Lord Jesus. We come against the spirit of fear and abide in the hearts and minds of the body of Christ. I cast it out in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I speak peace, I speak repose. I speak peace, I speak repose. I speak a place of rest into the hearts and minds of the body of Christ. Because that is our gift, that is our promise from God. There is a place of rest that I speak it into the hearts and minds of the body of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's scripture of the day is taken from Exodus chapter 34, verses 27 and 28 in the Christian Standard Bible Version. The Lord also said to Moses, write down these words, for I have made a covenant with you and with Israel based on these words. Moses was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He did not eat food or drink water. He wrote the Ten Commandments, the words of the covenant, on the tablets. The Rockaway Cathedral is a nonprofit organization that is seeking to win souls for the Lord in the Far Rockaway community. We especially want to make a difference in the lives of those who are often disenfranchised. However, we need your support to get there. Your act of kindness can be a lifesaver for someone. Remember, richness is not necessary, but willingness is. Please visit our website at www.therockawaycathedral.com. Click on the blue Donate tab at the bottom of the page, then click Make a Donation. We are also asking that you continue to support us by viewing our service once a week. We're now on Cash App. You can send your donations to Cash Tag Rockaway Cathedral. We thank you for your partnership and continued support. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome to the Rockaway Cathedral. My name is Pastor Ma. So, so I have, before we get into everything, I have a brief testimony. So, so there's a lot of things going on, you know, we're into different hats, practicing law, pastor of the church. So, you know, whenever you do these things, you need help. You need help. You can't, 
do these things by yourself. And I thank God for the help I've had on the, on the law side, but um, I'm not going to single out this particular person, but I asked somebody for help on the ministry side. There was something that was, you know, there was something that was just out there and uh, something that had to be handled. Uh, you know, because whenever you have churches, you have legal matters, you have regulatory matters, and you have financial matters and all sorts of matters. This is a regulatory matter. And nobody on the current team nor myself really has a lot of experience in that kind of regulatory matter. So I was able to get somebody to help out and she was able to work out, create the conditions where uh, the regulatory matter is, is uh, basically going to be resolved. So I thank God for people with the heart to serve. My testimony is, thank God that there are people on this earth with a heart to serve. So I thank the Lord for that situation uh, and the way that that situation is gonna be worked out. All right, so, so, so this week, this week is part two, part two. Part two of our series called The Sabbath Rest. Part two of our eight part series called The Sabbath Rest. The next two weeks, we won't be talking about Sabbath Rest, we'll be talking about other subjects. But today is part two, and, and today's message is called Covered in Glory, Covered in Glory. And it's going to be about the first pastor. Uh, I, I would call, I would consider this person the first pastor, the first person who considered to be, who would be considered to be an honest to goodness pastor on the earth. Your servant, the man of God, Moses. Today's message is going to be about Moses. The series is called Sabbath Rest. The sermon is called Covered in Glory. Be blessed. Join us as we welcome the gospel duo Melody and Harmony.
right, good morning, good morning. Today's message is called Covered in Glory. Today's message is called Covered in Glory. It's part of our series called Sabbath Rest. Part two of our eight-part series called Sabbath Rest. The scripture can be found in Exodus chapter 34, verses 29 to 35. Exodus chapter 34, verses 29 to 35. We're reading from the Christian Standard Bible. Please stand for the reading of God's holy word. Exodus 34, verses 29 and 35. Here beginning the reading of God's holy word. As Moses descended from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the testimony in his hands, as he descended the mountain, he did not realize that the skin of his face shone as a result of his speaking with the Lord. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face shone. They were afraid to come near him, but Moses called out to them. So Aaron... All the leaders of the community returned to him, and Moses spoke to them. Afterwards, all the Israelites came near, and he commanded them to do everything the Lord had told him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil over his face. And whenever Moses went before the Lord to speak with him, he would remove the veil until he came out. After he came out, he would tell the Israelites what he had been commanded. When the Israelites would see that Moses' face it was radiant, then Moses would put the veil over his face again. Until he went to speak with the Lord. So far, the scripture. The Lord, speak through your servant today and bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen. So, one of the things that we have to remember about this series is that spiritual warfare is connected to the Sabbath rest. Spiritual warfare is connected to the Sabbath rest. Now, last week we talked about this movie called John Wick 3 Parabellum, starring Asia Kate Dillon as the adjudicator, Lawrence Fishburne as the Bowery King, Ellie Barry as Sophia, and Keanu Reeves as John Wick. And a catchphrase from that movie, how they talked about Parabellum. Parabellum meant, if you want peace, prepare for war. Uh, and that phrase is taken from a book which we talked about last year called De Rema Militari by Flavius Vegetius Renatus. Now the phrase from that book, chapter three of that book, the original phrase is called, now Flavius Vegetius Renatus was a military advisor to the, one of the emperors of Rome, a military advisor to one of the emperors of Rome. And the phrase from that book, chapter three was, he therefore who desires peace should prepare for war. Uh, the Lord, like these, like that movie, like that book, the Lord always makes a connection between, you know, if, if you want to live a life free of anxiety, if you want to live a life of peace, if you want to live a life of repose, if you want to live in peace, you have to fight for it. it, it peace doesn't come for free. You have to struggle, you have to fight. If you struggle and fight spiritually, if you struggle and fight spiritually, there's a place waiting for you, not in heaven. I'm not talking about going to heaven. If your name is written in the blind's book of life, you will go to heaven. But on earth is a place for you, not a, not a day of the week, not a place. The Holy Land is for the children of Abraham by birth. That's their place of rest. But you as a believer, your place of rest is a state of mind. It's called the Sabbath rest. If you fight for it, there's a place of rest for you. Let's go to the scripture again. Exodus 34, verses 29 and 34. As Moses descended from Mount Sinai, the two tablets of the testimony in his hands, as he descended the mountain, he did not realize that the skin of his face shone as a result of his speaking with the Lord. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face shone. They were afraid to come near him, but Moses called out to them. So Aaron and all the leaders of the community returned to him, and Moses spoke to them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near, and he commanded them to do everything that the Lord had told him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil over his face. But whenever Moses went before the Lord to speak with them, he would remove the veil until he came out. After he came out, he would tell the Israelites what he had been commanded. And the Israelites would see Moses' face was radiant, and Moses would put the veil over his face again until he went to speak with the Lord. I have three points today. Point one is pastors. Point one is pastors. Now, I was reading one of the commentaries, and this is what, what the commentary said about this, this verse. 
When Moses spent extended un uninterrupted time in God's presence, he began to glow. What's even more interesting is that others observed it before Moses knew what was happening. When Moses spent extended uninterrupted time in God's presence, he began to glow. What's even more interesting is that others observed it before Moses knew what was happening. So, so pastors, you called by God. Now, this is the first pastor. Moses was the one who brought, the, who God charged with bringing his people out of Israel. Moses was, in fact, a child of Abraham. He brought out the children of Abraham from slavery in Egypt to the land that the Lord promised. And along the way, he was given certain instructions. Of course, the Ten Commandments were part of it. And there were other instructions, how they should worship God how they should treat each other, and how they should take care of themselves. These were basically the three types of commandments, how they should worship God, how they should treat each other, and how they should take care of themselves. This is part of the series of commandments given from God to Moses to the people. But Moses was their first pastor. They looked to him. He's the one who spoke to God. They come out and instructed the people. He spoke to God, came out and instructed the people. And that's why the Christ, that's what pastors are you are shepherds over your faith community your faith community may be in brooklyn may, may be in pennsylvania may, may be in staten island may, may be in new jersey may be in bangladesh may be in france may be in saskatchewan but wherever the lord has called you you are the voice of god for that faith community five people five thousand people five hundred thousand people have churches like that in nigeria and south korea However large or small your church is, if you are the senior pastor of that church, you, like Moses, represent the voice of God. And like Moses did, he went to speak to God. First he went up on the mountain, then he went in the tabernacle. But wherever Moses went, he had a communication, a communion with God. He spent time. He spent, the term is, extended and uninterrupted time before God. Now, now God could have just said, hey, you know, go up. There's some tablets over there behind that rock. Go pick it up and come back and read it to the people. That look, that takes a couple hours, a couple hours to go up the mountain, come back, speak to the people. No, no, no. If you read the verses before that, Moses spent 40 days and 40 nights in the face of God. 40 days and 40 nights. And when Moses was there, he wasn't even eating or drinking. Now, now you know, the scientists say your body requires water and you can't go like three days without water and a certain amount of days without food or else you die. But something happens when you're the in the extended and uninterrupted presence of God. So something happens. So, so, so every time, you know, you see in the Old Testament, people see an angel, they fall on the ground. Paul gets a vision, he's taken up into heaven. Stuff happens, it's so fantastic, can't even speak about it. Something happens when we get into that presence of God. Man, an angel appears before Mary, astonished. An angel appears before John the Baptist's father. So, so, so imagine Moses, who had no filter. God said, it's the only person I spoke to face to face. Moses had no filter, no barrier, no intermediary between him and God. He spent extended and uninterrupted time before God. And, and in that period, you know, time didn't matter. What was going on in the community didn't matter. What was going on in his own family? Moses was married and had a child. What was going on in his own family didn't matter. His, Moses had a brother and a sister involved in the ministry as well. What was going on in his family? What was going on in Moses' direct family? What was going on in the community in general? What, Moses had, And what was even going on in his own body? Moses had no connection, no perception, because all that mattered was being in the face of God. And when he came back, when he came back, he didn't even realize that he was, he was glowing. He was covered in glory. Moses was covered in the reflective glory of God. And then the word says, then he gave instructions to the people. Veil over his face. Then he gave instructions to the people. Only after he spent extended and uninterrupted time in the presence of God. Only after he spent an extended and uninterrupted. God could have just told him, go up, come down. No, no, but God wanted to spend time with him. 
God, God wanted to have a communion with him face to face, the back and forth, the listening. Pastors, it's not enough to speak the words of God to your faith community, 55,000 or 500,000. God wants you to spend extended and uninterrupted time with him. And it's not about necessarily your face glowing, but this message is about Sabbath rest. This is about living a life without anxiety. In that period of time that he was communing before God, with him is 40 days. Obviously with us, we don't really have the kind of society where you could spend as a pastor 40 days uninterrupted away. You may be able to spend a weekend. You may be able to spend a week or two, depending on how your church is operating. But what you can do is every day, each and every day, spend half an hour, an hour, 15 minutes. Whatever your situation allows, 15 minutes, half an hour, an hour, every day, in extended and uninterrupted communion with God, just you and God. In, in that instance, your own personal body doesn't matter. Whatever your siblings are doing doesn't matter. What's going on in your family with your wife and kids doesn't matter. And what's going on in your community doesn't matter. Not that those things are unimportant. Those things are very important. You are in charge of those situations. God has put you there for a reason. But he wants, he wants. And he can give you a message like that tomorrow, today. doesn't matter. In this instance, if you want to live a life of anxiety, God has provided an opportunity for you. God has provided an opportunity to you to have at least in that frame, in that place, in that space of time, an unexte extended and uninterrupted time with him. And in that time, you will, man, your face may not glow, but your heart will be on fire and your mind will be at rest. You will live, you will spend at least that time living a life in a place of rest place without anxiety point two melodies from heaven now one of the things that that could happen and this is not just for pastors this is for everybody in the body of christ if you remember when when saul was having some problems saul saul's relationship with god was was pretty much fractured you know he was sort of like samuel had just wrote him off he was still king. He was king for 40 years. He, you know, Israel experienced victory and peace, but he himself had no peace. He was always living a life of anxiety, very short tempers and so forth and so on. But one of the things that helped him was, I remember David before he was, became on the outs with Saul. David before he was thrown out of Saul's palace or ran away from Saul's palace. He was a musician. And one of the things that, that, that the, the, what the thing that first brought David into Saul's service was not Goliath. It was the fact that he was a musician and he would play the harp. Whenever Saul would go through his fits of, of anger and depression, full of anxiety, he would play the harp. And then, and then the playing of this music would help Saul feel better. So, so, so what does that mean for us? So, so there's lots and lots of different channels on lots of different music outlets all over the world, YouTube and Spotify and all these places. I don't even know all the places, Apple Play. Everybody has a music platform somewhere. Some are free, some you gotta pay for. Everybody has access to music all the time, 24 seven on your phone, your tablet, your computer, in your car, in your house, whatever. If you wanna live with, this, is, this message is called, the series is called Sabbath Rest. If you wanna spend or facilitate, facilitate living an anxiety-free life. You might want to consider putting on Christian music, sacred music, sacred music in your car, sacred music on your device, sacred music on your tablet, sacred music on your laptop, or wherever you hear music. I don't know what's in your playlist. People put whatever they want in their playlist, but come up with a, a playlist of sacred music, gospel music, Christian music, Something that glorifies God. Because like Saul, this when you're in this life, this life is full of anxiety and fear. You know, COVID and the economy and all sorts of things going on in this country and even other places around the world. So one of the things that, that could help 
It's created an atmosphere, an atmosphere where, 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 where you can live, have less anxiety. And, and just like the music of David, the anointed psalmist, you know, he wrote the book of Psalms. So he was an anointed psalmist. He wasn't just some guy. So if you listen to an anointed musician, psalmist, band, right, duo, whatever, somebody who's anointed by God to worship God through music, put that on your list, your playlist, your computer, your tablet, and play it. Half an hour, an hour, you know, push out that other, I mean, not to say, you know, you, people listen to whatever they want to listen to. But, but if you're in a body of Christ, think about think about incorporating sacred music by anointed musicians in your life. If, if you want to live a life without anxiety, this, this helps to create the atmosphere of peace and calm. This helps create the atmosphere of peace and calm. And, and, if, and, and, and in some instances, like Saul, even if you're shrouded in anxiety, there are moments where this music can calm your nerves. And you could live, you could have momentary respite, respite without anxiety, just by playing sacred music by anointed musicians. Point three, you too. So, so what was said or what happened to Moses spending extended and uninterrupted time in God's presence is not just for pastors. That Moses was the pastor of the people of Israel. And of course, your pastor, right, in addition to speaking God's word to you, also is spending some time, uninterrupted face time with the Lord. But but that's not just for them. We, anybody, anybody in the faith community, anybody who's a Christian, anybody who's given their life to Christ, you, because we have the Holy Spirit, we have an opportunity to commune with God on our own. So, so, so set aside, you may not have like Moses 40 days and 40 nights to spend, but, but, but set aside some time in your life, half an hour, 15 minutes, just like with the pastors, set aside some time in your life, an hour, half an hour, 15 minutes, not once in a while, but every day. And, and you could, you could commune with God. You, you could, you know, not just thinking about your word. It's not prayer time. It's not asking God for stuff. It's not crying time, not crying about anything. You're not praying about anything. You're not complaining about anything. You're not even worshiping about anything. You're just sitting there listening, waiting, listening, because the Holy Spirit is within you. God could speak to you. God can commune with you at any time that you allow it in your life. This, this is what Moses did. And one of the things about Moses, and this is, where, this is where we want you to be, Moses didn't even realize that this that the glory of God was on his face. Oh, God. Oh, God. The glory of God. He was a representation of the reflected glory of God. He was a representation of the reflected glory of God. And that's the life that God offers to you. There is a place. There is a place of rest for the people of God. There is a place. We talked about this in Hebrews last week. There is a place of rest for the people of God. It's theirs for you taking. But you got to work for it. You got to fight for it. You got to want it. You have to desire it and fighting for the time. You, you may think laying around half an hour a day is not fighting. No, the fight is fighting in your life, managing your time, arranging your schedule. That's the fight. The fight for your opportunity to lay before God. And if you do, the reflected glory of God will be in your life. Fight for the time and the place. You got to fight for the time. Nobody can do that except you. You've got to fight for the time. You've got to fight for the place. And you have to create an environment where people aren't disturbing you. If you fight for peace, if you war in the spirit for peace, God will, God will give it to you. You can have, like Moses, 
on your very countenance. Not the glowing, but the people can say, oh, he's, this man must have been with God. She must have been with God because she has a reflected glory of God. The peace of God is all over her face. This is what the Lord wants for you. This, just like Moses was in the presence of God, God can speak to you faith because the Holy Spirit is already in you if you accepted him already. So you can have communion with the with God himself, with the Holy Spirit himself. And if you do that on a regular basis, I guarantee you that in those moments, you won't have anxiety for sure. And over the course of time, you can live a life with the reflected glory of God. You can be covered just like Moses in glory. You could be covered in glory. That's it. You're here today. You've never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You've never accepted him as Lord and Savior. If that's you, pray this prayer after me. Lord, I give you my sins. I know you came for me. I know you lived for me. I know you died for me. And know on the third day you rose again. I believe in my heart that you rose from the dead. And I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. Therefore, today, I'm saved. My name is Marlon Curtin. This is the Rockwood Cathedral. Building God's kingdom in you. Go in victory. Go in peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, spending time in your presence reminds us of your loving character and brings us comfort. It strengthens our faith and allows us to face whatever life brings. Lord, the more we spend time in your presence, the more we are reminded of how you care for your children and deliver them when deliverance is needed. In Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 26, you speak of your face shining on us, blessing us, and giving us peace. We want others to see you when they look at us. Our desire is for them to want a relationship with you. As we spend time in your presence and our faith grows, we want to boldly proclaim to others your majesty and your loving kindness. We can only live this earthly life peacefully if we are in relationship with you. We thank you for the peace and joy that you bring to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for worshiping with us today. We pray that you were blessed by the word brought to us by Pastor Marlon. Go in God's grace until we meet again for Sunday service, Tuesdays for Bible study from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. Be sure to check out our website for further information about our ministry. God bless you. And remember, you are dismissed from this service, but never dismissed from God's presence. <laughs>